The debate over deflection in Multnomah County continues, leaving many Portland City commissioners unimpressed. I'm um, frustrated and I'm becoming very impatient. Well, I think there are a lot of questions that still have to be answered. A Tuesday morning and for the first time, the county officials publicly presented the city with their plan for a deflection center. A place on the central east side where people caught solely with possession of hard drugs will go if they choose treatment over jail. That option becomes available on Sunday when possession becomes a crime again in Oregon. And what, it's the 27th and officially we're supposed to start on the 1st? Uh, I'd like to see this movement faster, just like all Portlanders would. This cry for urgency comes on the heels of the county chair's decision last week to delay opening the center to October, launching mobile deflection instead, sending outreach workers to the streets as a temporary alternative. This is basically uh, a six-week trial period, if you will. We think mobile deflection, particularly part-time mobile deflection, is not a good long-term solution. Mayor Ted Wheeler now threatening to direct Portland police to arrest people instead of offering mobile deflection if the county does not open the center as planned by their new October deadline. And in the absence of a working deflection program, what we will do is we'll arrest people and we will book them. The county admits they will only have enough staff to offer deflection from 8 a.m. to 8 p.m. Monday through Friday. After hours, people will be cited or taken to jail. Again, um, that is an obvious uh, flaw with the program. Among the city's growing concerns, safety for the neighborhoods surrounding the deflection center, which includes a preschool that sued the county on Monday for privately making decisions about the center. Here's the attorney behind that case. Uh, as we've told them before, if we need to go in uh, for a, a court order on an emergency basis to stop the opening of the center, we'll do that. Uh, we don't have to do that today because they've given themselves more time, but we're watching very carefully. All right, so a lot of pressure on the county coming from all different angles here. They did not respond to our request for comment regarding that lawsuit, but we are told they're meeting with the surrounding community here at some point today. Pat. All right, well, it'll be see, interesting to see what happens there, but moving back to the city commissioners, what else about the county's plan did they not like? What raised red flags? So across the board, city commissioners are pushing the county to open a sobering center that's different than a deflection center. A sobering center is a place that first responders can take people under the influence to free up uh, emergency room beds and jails. The county does have plans to open a few sobering beds here in this building behind me at some time next year and a full sobering center in 2026. But both the mayor and the police chief have expressed previously the need for one sooner. And while the county understands that need, they said today, given permitting and construction timelines, they couldn't open one sooner than next year, even if they wanted to. Yeah, Pat. it's an interesting answer. I know that when we interviewed Commissioner Julia Brim Edwards, she was quite skeptical about the whole build out and thinks that a simple building could probably be put together pretty quickly. So that's another piece that we'll wait to see how that plays out. All right. Now, what about this 8 a.m. to 8 p.m. timeline for deflection? What if someone's picked up at 759? What if they're picked up at 901? Different chances for deflection? So it really all comes down to staffing. The county is still hiring people to work this center, and they said those are the hours that they can realistically offer deflection, which is raising major concerns for some city councilors, including Mingus Maps, who lives in this neighborhood. Take a listen. Uh, I live in this neighborhood all the time. I will tell you, we have a young lady who walks by my house about 5.45 in the morning, um, screaming at demons, uh, which are not there, um, and she wouldn't qualify for this program, so there are a lot of concerns. If we get any word that we're not actually going to move to a full-time facility that includes sobering beds, that does the work that is required to be done under, uh, under this initiative, then we're going to have to reevaluate our partnership. Our only role is from a law enforcement perspective. So it is the county's teams that will be providing that mobile deflection. Our job is to enforce the law, which we're allowed to do under state statute starting on September 1st. The public expects that we will enforce that law, and it's my expectation that the police bureau will enforce that law. They obviously want us to have a working deflection program, but if it's not working, the only tool available to us as a municipal government is arresting and booking. And I just wanted to be very clear with everybody about that today. All right, Blair, and it's fascinating that this has been coming for months and months and months. In some counties, like uh, Washington County, for example, they don't have buildings in place, but they do have teams in place 
to handle this. And here in Multnomah County, sounds like we're still going to be racing the deadline. All right, now, what about the lawsuit by the preschool? What are they hoping to get from filing this lawsuit? So that lawsuit alleges that the county violated Oregon public meetings law by making private decisions about deflection. I mean, just remember, uh, many of these decisions came from Chair Jessica Vega Peterson and her quote unquote leadership team. So we talked with the attorney for the preschool whose children attend that school. And here's what he told us today that the school wants from the county. Right now, we've focused only on the public meetings law violation. Uh, the relief we are seeking is to void all of the decisions of the county leadership team that has uh, designed the deflection center and deflection program, uh, enjoin them from continuing to meet in private and forcing them to meet in public, and then seeking our, uh, our legal fees for having brought the case. County staffers have tried to listen. I don't think they've really heard us. I mean, we have very serious concerns about the plans for the project and whether it will be safe. All right, now as for what comes next in this whole saga, the center is again expected to open sometime in October and Mayor Wheeler challenged county leadership today asking them if they could commit to that timeline, that deadline, and they expressed confidence that they could. Pat. All right, we'll be watching. Thank you, Blair. Great stuff as always.